The space is reminiscent of a colossal auditorium, with rows of seats fanning out before a massive, grotesque structure. It's clear this place was designed to bear witness to something monumental. In the dim, flickering light, I see the audience, an assortment of severely deformed women. They look as if an untalented sculptor had attempted to craft lingerie models out of wax that had started to melt. Despite their grotesque deformities and missing limbs, each woman bears exaggerated, unnaturally enlarged features, swollen attributes fabricated to fulfill the distorted lusts of their creator. They are moving, speaking, their mouths repeating seductive flirtations to Douglas. Their voices are hollow, mechanical, as if they are automatons stuck in a loop. There is no spark of sentience in their eyes, only a reflection of their creator's twisted desires. It's sickening. I realize these women were created by Douglas, inspired by real women he had lusted over. They are soulless golems, brought to life by the extension's malevolent power, placed here to bear witness to the culmination of his plan. At the center of this nightmarish theater is a massive biomechanical structure. It's a grotesque mimicry of a horse, sculpted from living tissue and machinery intertwined in a horrific parody of life. Tendrils as thick as tree trunks writhe and coil around it, like oversized nerves pulsating with a grotesque heartbeat. Lying at the base of this abomination is... My God. It's... It's Wakaniki, the skewbald mayor of the Anilaki tribe. Somehow, after all these years, it's still alive. Its ulcerated lips are pulled back over long, yellow teeth in a permanent grimace of agony. Diseased flesh clings to protruding bones, and its chest heaves with labored breaths. Its eyes are black, empty voids, devoid of any spark of sentience. The mare lies here as a forsaken vessel. Its spirit, I fear, is ensnared somewhere far more disturbing, leaving behind a living shell trapped in endless torment. I suspect. No, I know. This node, this grotesque heart of the extension, is what Douglas hoped to use to transfer Mashk Ayeli's consciousness, trapped within the mare, into its original body that now masquerades as the extension. Yet, this planned reunion seems to have been desperately interrupted. Beside the mare, the floor is stained with trails of dried blood not from this pitiful creature, but human. One trail leads out of the chamber, panic and desperation written in its hasty smears. The other delves deeper into this sanctum, drawn in deliberate, determined strokes. Touching the latter, visions of that fateful night flood through me. Susan confronting Douglas, both marked by wounds and fury, their conflict was violent, their separation tragic. Douglas might have fled this place, but Susan, she ventured deeper into the belly of this nightmare. I need to keep moving. The truth of what happened to Susan, what she did, it's here. I can feel it calling to me. This place wants to show me, and I can't. I won't turn away now. Whatever lies ahead, I must face it. Susan's story, her sacrifice, it deserves to be known. And I need to know if there's any part of her left to save.